Today we're going to talk about iron losses, and uh, we prepared these slides with uh, my colleague Dr. Farid Sidat. So the idea is to show how we can compute iron losses uh, efficiently, accurately, and as fast as possible. So let's get started. So I'm going to talk in these 10 minutes uh, of the different models of materials, the different methods we have for iron losses computations for laminated and non-laminated material. And then how we can also speed up this computation using a new uh, magnetostatic methods. So we can start by looking at the different types of material. So of course, to take into account the saturation, we have multiple types of nonlinear BH property. Uh, so you can use either the two or three coefficient analytical models, or you can enter the BH property using the full spline of uh, BH curve with all the points. Uh, and then the main type of anisotropy that we're going to consider in this case uh, will be the laminated regions. So that will be the main parts on which we want to compute iron losses. So you can indicate cylindrical or planar laminations, uh, indicate the direction of these laminations, as well as the stacking factor. And that will be taken into account during the, the solving. And that will also enable the computation of iron losses at the end. So let's talk now about the losses themselves. So first of all, this computation can be done on a laminated region or any other iron region. The main method we talk first are a posteriori methods, which means that you first solve your model, for example, in transient. And then as a post-processing, we are going to evaluate how much would the losses be with this transient phenomenon. Uh, that means that if you do a power balance, for example, you need to add them to your power balance in order to consider the, the real efficiency. Something to know as well is that iron losses are still a topic of research. So there's no perfect model. There's no physical equation to, to solve this exactly, uh, which means it has a level of fidelity and it will not give you the exact value all the time. So these are methods, uh, good and better methods, but uh, they are not perfect uh, in any case. And so these iron losses, we'll be able to evaluate them in transient or magnetostatic now. And we have two methods available, which I will detail, the Bertotti's method and the loss surface method. Uh, another type of iron loss computation we can also do is during the solving process, which means that we need to consider the exact uh, BH loop, hysteresis loop of the material on each node. So this takes a bit more time to solve, but it can bring a bit more accuracy and can be used for a uh, bulk material. So if we start with laminated regions, as I said, we have two models, the Bertotti model, which works in all the different applications, the state, transient, and static now. And we have the LS model, which is only in transient. So both of these can be used in 2D, SKU, and 3D. So if we focus first on the Bertotti model, so this is the main iron loss model you find uh, can take different names depending on where you're looking for, uh, but it's uh, the main principle. So we have these curves of losses per kilo versus induction and frequency. And typically this model will try to fit these losses, taking into account hysteresis losses, eddy current losses, and it will adjust the value with excess losses. So you have this three K coefficient and this three alpha exponent to quantify uh, the different losses at different uh, frequencies. And when you run this type of iron loss computation, you get uh, the results in different formats. So first you can see the evolution of the losses and mostly the average value of losses on one electrical period. Uh, and you can also display the power density. So that allows you to display a special quantity where you can see where most of the losses are located. Okay, that's interesting. Then if we compare to the loss surface method, so this loss surface method is unique to Flux. Uh, it's been developed by the G2E lab. And the difference for this, for this one is that it's based on measurements that include variation versus B, like the other one, but also measurements versus DBDT uh, for the, the whole hysteresis cycles. So based on this extra measurement, we're able to take into account uh, more detailed losses, for example, uh, rotational losses inside the, the iron. For this model, we have a list of predefined sheets that are already available in Flux. So if you don't have many measurements, you can use a similar uh, lamination to what you have. Otherwise, we need to do some identification 
which I will come back to uh, in, a, in a minute. And in terms of result with this LS method, we can expect the same as Bertotti, but also we have one more capability, which is to display the BH curve on one point uh, of the device. So now, if we want to compare a little bit these two methods, uh, let's say if we need to summarize it quickly, Bertotti's model is the one that most people use because it's the easiest to use. Uh, you can really simply take the manufacturer's data and put it uh, in the fitting tool and get your, your model in flux. Uh, although it's not the most accurate method, but it is the method that people use the most and is the easiest. On the other hand, we have the LS model, which is specific to flux. And the accuracy is much better because we see, we consider the, the DBDT uh, aspect. But of course, we have to take into account we have uh, the need to identify the model a bit more. So this was for the laminated regions. If we switch to the non-laminated regions, we also have solutions. The first methods are the ones that I said are during the solving, which means representing the full hysteresis cycle. So we have this first uh, Giles Atherton model, which is a bit uh, the first method we introduced in Flux. And there's a second model, which is the Prezac model, which came after. Uh, I would say the Prezac model is a bit easier to use because you can identify a bit quickly the, the shape of the cycle just from a physical uh, uh, meaning, I would say. So if you need to do this type of computation, you can define your material using one or the other uh, method. And if you need to compute these losses with this uh, method during solving, the way to do it would be to create a sensor. And then you can choose a predefined magnetic power type of computation. So that way it will compute for you the, the amount of losses at each time step. And you can even visualize it because it's a sensor uh, during solving. That's for the losses during solving on bulk material. Uh, now, coming very soon in 2025, there's also a new method which will appear for bulk material. So anything which is like uh, ferrites, core, or iron powders, like SMC materials, for example. Uh, for now, it was limited to laminated material, but we, we have introduced a new method, which is in a way similar to Bertotti for laminated, but slightly adapted to, to these types of bulk material. And in the end, you can use it the same way you use the other methods. So now you'll have a second button there, iron losses on ferrite and iron powder cores. This model has five coefficients uh, and it's going to be available very soon in 2025. So now I talked a couple of time about identification tool. So from the flux supervisor that you see on the top right, we have this material identification button. So it's a, it's a script running in Compose. Uh, and from there, you can basically use the fitting tool adapted to your need. So you have fitting tools for the hysteresis models. You have fitting tools for the iron losses models as well. And for each of them, you have an example, like a template that you can see uh, and test. So if we look first at the Bertotti model uh, fitting, then you need some uh, Excel table with this type of information inside, and it will do the fitting for you. You can visualize it uh, at different frequencies. And you can export the, the resulting coefficients uh, so that you have it in the influx. If you want to fit the LS model this time, the LS model is slightly uh, more demanding in terms of measurement. You need like static BH curves for different induction. And you also need dynamic uh, BH loops uh, at different frequencies in order to be able to take into account the, the dynamic parts of the losses. So this fitting is a bit more like step. There's a few steps to, to make, uh, but in the end, the result is the same. You have a, a text file you can put in your flux model to use this material uh, in your modeling. Now we talk about the different models and losses, uh, but there's also some new features, as I say, for speeding up the computation. So first of all, if you want to do multi-parametric study, so let's say you have an IPM example here, you want to solve iron losses for multiple speeds and multiple values of current, then you can prepare a scenario where you do all of this. Uh, that means here about 3000 steps to do this setup. We can parallelize the different speeds and currents, but not the position. We cannot solve uh, in parallel the different transient uh, solvings. And it takes about 23 minutes in this case. So once you have solved this, uh, there is a button multi-parametric computation. So you can select directly to compute 
the iron losses for all of these time steps and position and current. Uh, and it takes just one second to create you this spatial quantity or this parameter uh, that you can plot, of course. But you can also export these values very quickly. So in just a few clicks, you can compute them and export in CSV. You can choose even to export only the average value. So very quickly, you can extract the losses for multiple speed points uh, using these, uh, these buttons. And so all of that is coming from multiple transient magnetic solution. So the new feature that came now, which is available in advanced mode already, is the magnetostatic computation. So that means that you can solve a similar workflow, but this time, because you're in static, you can distribute all the position. So if you were to solve for a single speed, for example, then a single speed is, let's say, 90 steps in this case. But here you could do the 90 steps in parallel. Here we also have steps of current. If we consider the same kind of control angle, we don't need to solve it for multiple speeds. And so potentially we can reduce the time of computation by uh in this case six and have all of this solved in just four minutes and that means we can just reuse that computation for the any speed that we want because it's done from static so something important here is that the change from transient to static means that you can uh, distribute even better the computation because you can distribute all the positions uh, already and this method is already implemented in flux motor actually and it will be available in femt soon in terms of results, once you've done this, it's uh, exactly the same. You can get the same result and export the same CSV. The difference is in this step, where you do the computation for multi steps in magnetostatic. You just need to enter for which frequency you want to compute the losses. But since it's in uh, static, you can repeat that step uh, for any value you want, uh, kind of adapt the, the results to the, the speed you have. So, to conclude on this, we've seen that we have method to do fast, efficient, and accurate iron losses with Alter Flux. So make sure to check all the new features when, when they are available. Uh, and of course, I'll put a link in the chat for the documentation on iron losses. So we keep adding a few st stuff uh, in the new versions. So uh, I hope uh, you, <laughs> you learn uh, one thing or two today through this uh, presentation. Thank you.